Hello there. Namaste. So this is the documentary, The Silence of Swastikas. Uh, swastika. Um, what I know of the swastika is surprisingly not what everyone else knows. Because I remember watching Yu Yu Hakusho growing up and there was a, a monk with a swastika tattooed on his forehead. And it got me curious and figured it out. And then I found out the history of it on how the Nazis basically used it in order to gain access to locations and temples which were... No one had been allowed to set foot on for ever just because I was like, oh, look at the symbol. We, of course, most people, they look at the swastika. They think it means hatred. They think it means racism. They think it means like, you know, complete opposite of what it originally stands for. So I, I'm, I'm curious on what this is going to go. If I can learn a lot new or just a few things new or things that I just never even knew before. That's always a good thing. So, yeah, this is the silence of swastikas. History is evidence of great civilizations turning into dust and their ruins leaving a shocking legacy. Swastik puri dunya mein shanti ko pratik hai. A symbol of well-being and prosperity was tarnished over the last century. It is time to peel the history and know the truth. But that's the thing is like you you can you can correct like I've I've said it many times. I've talked with people about it like the true meaning of it cuz well, I've always been more immersed in the eastern culture than I have been in the western culture. So I knew things that were just completely changed. And it was just, it, it's ridiculous, because no matter what you say, no matter what logic you put behind it, it's like, oh, well, that's not the meaning of it anymore. No, it, this is what it represents. This is what it represents, because this group of people forced, it just did so many bad things that it's what it represents, that it may, it's, it's going to be an uphill battle to take it back. I remember when I saw it being used in a, um, a what, a, what was it, the Diwali? I saw it being, uh, like, drawn with, like, the, the red, and it was, like, a decorated beautiful beautiful piece of artwork but the focal point was the swastika and i was looking at that i was even even i even though i know the history of it was just like why 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 and i'm like oh yeah of course of course because they don't care about what the the, the nazis did it did the nazis are irrelevant at that for them because it's just been ingrained in culture for a long period of time it, it's just the Western world had no idea of it, so even I, even though I know the history of it, it still it still jars me sometimes because I'm not used to seeing it. And then I see it, and I'm like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Show us USA. July 2020. Simran, the student union head of Brandeis University in the U.S., calls the swastika a symbol of peace and suggests including it in the school curriculum. A huge protest was carried out and Simran had to apologize. Yeah, that's what I absolutely hate. Absolutely hate because they have this closed off mind. That, okay, this is the one thing. So there are there. I probably will need to watch this documentary. There's a documentary about how uh, the U.S., is closed off unless it comes from the u.s you're not allowed like th there's a reason why they have their own version of football and they call football something else there's a reason why they play their own sports because well they don't want to lose in the first place it's a very u.s mindset and honestly even i fell victim to it because they have conditioned people to believe that nothing is good unless it comes from like Hollywood, unless it comes from something from the U.S. Well, unless it's made in, you know, but it's it's just one of those things like it has to originate. Our sports have to originate. Our movies have to originate. Yet our movies are garbage, unless you're talking about like the, the late 80s, early 90s, some of the early 2000s. It's just the ridiculousness that people will create mobs just because you said something that comes from fact that comes from history but because it's not current history that's the only thing that seems to be prevalent in the u.s that's the reason why they're trying to eradicate the the story of snow white because this 20 year old actress doesn't believe anything that comes before her time is relevant 
that it needs to be current history. But current history is irrelevant to the future. Is irrelevant, it is inconsequential to the past. It, the, the, the thing is, it's like people for, have forgotten, apparently. There is that, that quote, if those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it or destined to repeat it. It's just, here we are acting in protest instead of going to, let's hear her out. Let's find out why she said it. Students were offended by the swastikas. What happened with Simran wasn't the first Hindu incident. groups in Canada say they're being subjected to hate. Yep. Yep, and that's the thing. I'm, I'm a white man saying it when I was correcting people about it, and it's just like, you're a huge racist. Like, no, no, look it up. It's, it's You can find it. You can find this stuff. It's easily accessible. Everyone has the a, a, a huge amount of information at their fingertips. But the problem is people refuse to seek it out. People prefer being told this. It happens in religion. It happens in personal belief systems. Everyone get in this little bubble of everyone who says the same exact thing and nobody bothers to look up anything different. <sighs> in April 2015, the George Washington University in the U.S. mulls banning the swastika. Bill was introduced in the U.S. state of Maryland seeking a ban on the swastika. All due to hate for the swastika. Yeah, exactly. They, they create hate. This Sorry, symbol I'm, is a part. I, I, I'm pausing it too much because this is this is making me angry. This is making me angry because it's the small mindedness of well, the U.S. Uh, exponentially. The, uh, there are, uh, it, it's all, it seems like the mind has only shrunk and shrunk and shrunk with each generation, and TikTok has not helped that. It, it's just insane the p fact that people don't want to understand, or they'll be hearing someone's reasoning or. Someone will give a reasonable argument and they're like, well, you're wrong. It means hate. Well, why does it mean hate? Well, the Nazis did this and this and this using it as their flag. Well, where'd they get it from? Just, just go. Oh. ...of daily life for the Hindu community. The idea of ban was not justified. In April 2021, a campaign was run to implement legislation to ban the swastika in a few states of the U.S. Several Hindu organizations protested. How could the swastika be banned or considered a symbol of hate for crimes that did not happen underneath it? Very happy to inform that this bill will no longer be moving forward. So Maryland is also settled. The entire Western world views the swastika with abomination and as a diabolical <laughs> symbol. The media coverage is the biggest reason behind it. Putting it a symbol of hate. It's tonight a symbol of hate. One of the most controversial symbols imaginable. It's the latest example of hate symbols in the Sun City. The haunting question is, why is the swastika a demonic symbol in the Western media, while it is revered in the East, especially in India? Because Hitler persecuted six million Jews and buried them under his sign, but was it the swastika or something else? Hitler never used the word swastika in his recorded life. Did Hitler ever use the swastika? It, it, whatever he designed was actually at an angle because the swastika is a cross and the, you know but his was slanted it, it looks the same and everyone's used the word since then because that's the word affiliated with it but it's a nazi flag if not then what is it that engulfs six million jews who are those people who changed a symbol of peace to that of evil the answer is one of the greatest betrayals of the 20th century, with profound implications for billions globally. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, I tried to stop pausing it because it's just so aggravating. So aggravating. The, the... Oh. Stupidity and the fact that World people want to be like the U.S. No, 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 don't, don't be like the U.S. Everyone, everyone, be yourself. Everyone, be yourself. The problem with the U.S. is they got too, they started getting too used to being around the U.S. and being identified as the U.S. that they never bothered to accept or understand anything outside of it. There's a reason why you, uh, U.S. people are hated almost anywhere they go. Never in history has such ruination, physical and moral, been associated with the name of one man. Hitler, who ruled Germany from 1933 until his death, under a symbol that the Western world now calls swastika. Was Hitler so influenced by India and Hindu tradition that he made the swastika a symbol of his entire political life? 
to know this, let us peep into the speeches and writings of Hitler. Hitler, a chronology of his life and time. This book compiles all the speeches and statements of Hitler. Let's see if his words and beliefs are consistent with the current understanding of swastika in the West. May 21st, 1930. Hitler angrily replies to a German politician, Otto Strasser, that there is one possible kind of revolution. All revolutions, and I have studied them all, have been racial. Hitler said further, didn't you declare openly for the Indian independence movement when it was obviously a rebellion of the inferior Hindu race against the superior Anglo-Nordic? Hitler declared, quote, the Nordic race has the right to dominate the world and that right will be the guiding principle of our foreign policy. December 4th, 1931. Hitler advocates friendship with England in a press conference and says that, quote, the loss of India by the British Empire would be a misfortune for the rest of the world, including Germany. January 26, 1932. Hitler, while addressing an association of Germany's most illustrious industrialists, proclaimed the superiority of the white race and said that the British Raj did not conquer India by means of justice and law but by the most brutal ruthlessness on the basis of racial superiority over the Indians. On July 27, 1941, Hitler, with an idea of trampling Eastern Europe, said that this region can be controlled with over 250,000 soldiers. We should learn from the British Raj, which is controlling 400 million Indians with 50,000 soldiers. In a speech on 8th August 1941, Hitler talked about making Russia to Germany as India was to the British Raj. On 17th, 18th September, once again in a conversation, Hitler said that if British rule leaves India today, then India will collapse in no time. <laughs> 2nd August 1942, Hitler said in an evening conversation that he would still like Britain to rule India. Gosh, that's the thing is like India was uh, ruled for so long that India wasn't allowed to stand on its own feet. Imagine how much further India would be right now if, well, Britain hadn't been robbing them for the past 400 years, was it? It's just <laughs> they'd be the like one of the wealthiest and most prosperous nations. But because they were robbed of most of their wealth and one of the jewels is still on the queen's crown or king's cr whatever it is the, on the crown. It's just <laughs> it's 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 insane. The fact that people like that's the thing. Even Hitler believed. Well, of course, he was insane to begin with. But the fact that people still believe that kind of stuff. The fact that, oh, because they were authoritarian and dictated for 400 years, now this race, this people cannot live without them. It's like, what kind of mindset is that? Oscar, that's nuts. That kind of stuff. It, it's uh, the sheer, the sheer discrimination, closed mindedness. That's, that's what this all, this is, this whole thing's about. It's all about the narrow minded focus and the fact that people refuse to listen to, to reason, everyone goes to an emotional response. And I've brought this up time and time again. Emotion has no place in an argument. I firmly believe as soon as you get emotional in a discussion, you've lost the argument. Because as soon as you say, well, I feel, well, where's the history? Where's the facts? Where's the reason in how you feel? There's no reason there. It's emotion-based. There is no logic behind your feelings. It's emotion-based. So you've lost the argument. I'll even get uh, frustrated sometimes, but I try to think rationally and come up with sentences, even if I'm absolutely upset at some of the things I'm seeing. So it's just, it's just like you ha you can't get swayed. You can't sway people with emotion. You, well, uh, let's face it. The majority of people are easily getting swayed in the U.S. by emotion. 
But that shouldn't be the case. People should be talking logically and having rational discussions. Just saying you're hurting someone's feelings shouldn't be a trigger to instantly shut down and everything end. No, no, that's where you open up discussions. Well, why do you feel this way? What makes you feel this way? You try to get to the root of the issue, but it's like, uh-oh, uh-oh, we're, we're stepping on someone's toes. We, we can't bother them no more. Let's, oh my gosh, a huge group is being offended now. No, no, talk talk come to a discussion everyone needs to meet at a table and just start talking heck it's, it's like family meetings there are always people who don't get along when families get together but at the same time it's you just have to talk or avoid that person at all costs but as long as you know why sorry i went off on a tangent there these facts pose a contradiction. Would a man so megalomaniacal, so devilish in his understanding of humanity with such prejudices against the Hindus make an ancient Hindu symbol of prosperity, the swastika, represent his entire political career? There is more to this than meets the eye. The world today knows the swastika to be a symbol of Hitler's crimes. The mere mention and depiction of swastika triggers talks of anti-Semitism and the Holocaust. But how did Hitler arrive at the Nazi symbol, and what did he call it? Hitler explains this in his autobiography, Mein Kampf. Hitler refers to the Nazi symbol as Hakenkreuz. It appears eight times in his book. But today, Google translates Hakenkreuz to swastika. But strangely, Haken and Kreutz separately translates to hooked cross. Kreutz in Germany means cross and was even used to name medallions and badges for the German military. For instance, Balkenkreutz means beam cross, Ritterkreutz means knight's cross. How then did the Hakenkreutz become the swastika? Well, that was a sign of hate. Uh, you could tell by the angle it was at, the fact that everyone was there was white and raising their hands. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> cross Ugh. is a symbol of Christianity. Haken Kreutz means hooked cross. So when did this become swastika? The answer is hidden behind 2,000 years of history, which culminated in the brutal persecution of 6 million Jewish people. Nazi Germany was not the only country using this symbol. The Finnish Air Force used this symbol from 1918 to 2020. They called they, it Hakaritsi, which... But they were using the... You can tell just by the look of it, the symbol is not at the slant that the Nazis used. You can tell that it's a, a different symbol. That, that's the thing. It's like, you can tell by looking at it. But the problem is, to people who haven't seen or aren't in the know, don't realize that there is a difference between them. Google translates correctly to Hockenkreutz. Similarly, in the County Council headquarters of Britain, built in 1939, on the uniform of the 45th Infantry Division of the U.S. Army, in France, on the airplanes of Air Force Unit N-124, and on the ruble printed after 1917 in mm, Russia, well, that one's the rest was full of symbols that looked like the Hockenkreutz. In the USA, the cover of the 1913 yearbook of Westfield High School shows a swastika-like symbol which they call the Gamidian. The word has hidden roots in the West. Gamidian, according to the Modern English Dictionary, is a cross that looks like a swastika. But if we see in the glossary of liturgical and ecclesiastical terms, Published in 1877, there's only a cross found in churches from the very beginning. Hakenkreuz, or Gamarion, or Hakaristi, all mean a kind of cross. But was the word swastika ever used as a cross? The answer is a yes, due to callous scholarship, which spread in spite of cautions raised by some eminent scholars of the time. Mm -hmm. 
German archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann traveled to Greece in 1868 with the goal of finding the ancient city of Troy. In 1871, Schliemann found the remains of the ancient Troy. The remains had the symbol resembling a swastika. These remains and these symbols immediately became a topic of discussion. In 1885, Heinrich Schliemann's book Ilios was published in French, in which he used the word swastika for the symbol. But what did he mean by the swastika? A direct English translation of Ilio strongly suggests that Schliemann looked at the symbol as a kind of cross and used the word swastika for it. This comes out clearly in an 1891 English translation by Eugene Seeley's, which says that the symbol found in the excavation is a cross. The uh, English version of Schleimann's book, published in uh, 1891, uses both words, the swastika and the hook cross for the symbol at different places. But the use of the swastika was opposed. Schliemann, in his book Ilios, the city and country of the Trojan, described how his friend and scholar Max Müller was angry with the use of the word swastika. In his protest, Max Müller said, quote, "I do not like the use of the word swastika outside India. It is a word of Indian origin and has its history and definite meaning in India." End quote. Aww. Almost prophetically, he warns, quote, The mischief arising from the promiscuous use of technical terms is very great. The occurrence of such crosses in different parts of the world may or may not point to a common origin, but if they are once called swastika, the vulgus profanum or common masses will at once jump to the conclusion that they all come from India, and it will. Well, it's not not just that they all come from India. That doesn't matter. It's the fact that now every single symbol. Like it, it's funny how he was able to think so far ahead. It was like we can't label this as such. We have to call it something else because people will link it to India. But in this case, now, be, honestly, if it was called that way in advance and everyone knew it as such, like oh, it all comes from India, then when the Nazi party flew that flag, it would have just been seen as oh, why the heck are they flying this with a symbol? It, it's one of those things that is probably a. He was thinking about. The future of like you know what, let's have Indian culture retain Indian culture I guess maybe, but at the same time it backfired because now the Nazis were able to take over as the ones who created and flew that flag and they're they're the sole right owners of that. It takes some time to weed out that prejudice. End quote. Okay, so it was due In to the, the hate. In 1894, a famous book was written, The Migration of Symbols. In Chapter Two, the author writes that Dr. Schliemann has found the Gamidian in the excavations of Troy, and in this book, he explains the meaning of the word Gamidian, a type of Christian cross. The word swastika is not used here. Further, it was written in this book that Hindus make Gamidian, i.e., a kind of cross, on their books on New Year's Day, not the swastika. Did the West also consider the swastika to be a kind of a cross? Be it some postcards of 1907 or some American stock certificates of 1910, all evidence suggests that the word swastika was also used for a kind of a cross. But how did Hitler's Hakenkreuz become the Indian swastika, which has no relation with the cross? The answer would dismay you, and for that, we have to look at Hitler's childhood. Hmm. In his book *Mein Kampf*, Hitler recounts the joyous religious moments of his childhood in the town of Lambach, how he used to take singing lessons in the church courtyard in his spare time, and how, in doing so, he was completely immersed in the festivities of the church.
how the head of the monastery was the same to Hitler as the village priest was to Hitler's father, a role model, and how he himself wanted to be the priest of the monastery. Alluding to this, an old friend of Hitler also talks about how Hitler wanted to be a priest and how he used to wear a kitchen apron and preach in the pose of a priest. The place Hitler talks about in his book is the Lombok Abbey Monastery, which has the symbol in seven different spaces. According to Robert Pine, who wrote the popular biography of Hitler, Hitler could see this sign in his childhood from the window of his room and on his way to his school. According to Pine, this sign is the inspiration behind Nazi hack and crime. Although Hitler never clearly mentioned about this inspiration, but the effect of Christianity on Hitler from childhood and his relation to this monastery points in this direction. What does this symbol mean in a Christian church? And why did Hitler choose it? The answer to these questions will peel another layer of this mystery. History was changed. The game of chess was played with humanity, where the moves were all in one wrong direction. And these moves were going to become a great source of concern in the future for innumerable people of the East, for which we need to look at when the West started using the word swastika. In 1871, Frederick Schliemann found these signs on the remains of Troy, and the Oxford Dictionary proposes that the modern use of the word swastika entered the English language in 1871. But what was the symbol called before 1871? In a book called The Pursuant of Arms, published by the British Library in 1851, this symbol is called Philfort, which is called Gamadion in the Greek churches, and the only similar sign is found on old coins of the Crete civilization. No other so popular example is there. Quote, we are still in want of equally famous clue, unquote. These words from 1851 book suggest that the West did not know of the swastika used in the East. Indeed, the book never refers to the symbol as a swastika. In uh, another book published in 1870 named Textile Fabrics, on the robes used in the church, the word Gamadian is used 19 times in it and always to signify some sort of a cross, never as a swastika. Gamma is a Greek letter. Four gammas joined together to form a gamarion. It was occasionally used by early Christian society. But how did this symbol become synonymous with Jesus Christ? A very important part of any building is its cornerstone. If a cornerstone is seen from outside, its shape is like the Greek letter gamma, which are combined to form a gamadian. Nelson's Dictionary of Christianity states that the gamadian has been used as a symbol of Jesus Christ and as a cornerstone, but why is the Gamidian so important as a cornerstone? Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of Christianity. The precious cornerstone in Isaiah 28:16 is a reference to Jesus Christ as the foundation of God's people. Similarly, in the New Testament of the Bible, in Ephesians 2, 921, Paul mentions, You are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. Bible may In about 10 places in the Bible, 
Jesus Christ is called the cornerstone and the Gamadian has also been called a cornerstone. This is why in Nelson's Dictionary of Christianity, Gamadian is called a sign of Jesus Christ. And for this reason, the importance of Gamadion in Christianity can be understood. This sign is still present in many places of importance to Christianity. On the 8th century Holy Well and the cross slab of St. Brigid in Ireland's Cliffany, 6th century Hagia Sophia Church in Istanbul, 10th century Ergwert Salter's Christian Manuscripts cover page, Gothic Cathedral of Notre Dame, or in the medieval church of Lalibela, the cross and the hooked cross can be seen side by side. There were several types of crosses on coins used by the Merovingian dynasty, one of which was the hooked cross. Be it the transenna panels of Christian architecture from the 11th century found in Italy, or the gray stones from the 13th to the 16th centuries found in Bosnia, we can see this sign. It is very common for this sign to be found in ancient churches or other places associated with Christianity. Not surprisingly, this sign can also be seen on the floor of the Pope's official residence in Vatican City. It was necessary to peek into the history of the symbol to understand its relationship with Christianity. But it begs the question, was Hitler so influenced by Christianity that he chose a symbol which metaphorically represented Jesus Christ to drive his politics and ideologies? It is not as difficult as understanding Einstein's theory of relativity once the Pandora's box of Hitler's speeches is opened and dismantled. I, okay, I know what this is trying to do. Okay. The issue isn't that it's it's a, a swastika or anything, because liter literally symbols look similar no matter where you go. I mean, what? There was one symbol in uh, uh, the game Destiny that had to be removed because it was affiliate with a, a terror organization, and they had to bring it down because they didn't know. They just designed it because they thought it looked cool, and then it found out that it was linked to something like that. It's one of those things that's just like, maybe he based it off Christianity, maybe he based it off of something random, maybe he thought it up. Because even I was creating a logo that ended up looking a lot like a swastika or uh, whatever you call it. And I didn't use it because I was like, oh crap, people would think this, of course. So I couldn't use it. But it was just like, oh well. I don't think the issue is why it's like that. I think the main issue is uh, it's not representative of what the nazis used it for the original like to tell people what the original uh, originality of it is what the true source of it is you could either talk about the christian belief you could talk about the the hindu belief you could talk about whatever it is but you could not say that it's meant to be hate because right now it's like oh they're saying it's the swastika because it's being called a swastika but now the problem is you're not going to stop people, even with this video, from calling it a swastika. Because from now on, even if it's the Gideon, the, the Gideon cross, even if it's the uh, swastika, no matter what it is, it for now, from now on, be called a swastika. From now on. So you're not changing anyone's belief in it. What you're supposed to do is make people understand that it's a sign of peace. Because it feels like it's it's like, oh, let's let's shift the narrative towards... Uh, Christianity. Let's make them the hate group. But the problem is, it's it's not the 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 religion that's seen as evil. It's not Hinduism. It's not Christianity. It's the symbol itself. So you're supposed to veer people's view away from the symbol. You should uh, talk about how Christianity viewed it as this. Uh, the Hindus view it as this. This group views it as this. This group views it as this for thousands of years. And then the Nazis did this. And then you talk about more things of what it represents. Because right here, it's just like, uh, they're just trying to say it's all Christianity's fault. <laughs> it's 
that's that's where they're gonna end it. It's like, oh, it's all Christianity's fault. Let's blame Christians instead of the swastika. Let's call it the Gideon. No, no, you're not gonna change people's beliefs with this right now. You're not. It's too late. It's too late. What you do is you have to talk with people and let them know, oh. This was used by the Nazi party, but it doesn't represent its original sign. It's about educating people, not shifting blame. Shifting blame isn't going to do anything. Oh my gosh. This just adds to the problem. <laughs> On April 12th, 1922, in the Nazi party newspaper, Hitler said that he is following the example of Jesus Christ in the struggle against the Jewish people, and it is inappropriate to say that speaking against the Jews is same as speaking against Christianity. On November 11th, a newspaper in Munich published an interview with Hitler describing how he was fighting Marxism, which was influenced by Jews, and how Jesus Christ was a German. It's funny how people will rewrite uh, the <laughs> the Bible in their own image. It was like there's that one that says uh, Jesus Christ was an Amer I think there are actually two. What well, Jesus Christ is an American. Everyone rewrites it to be like, oh, Jesus Christ came from here. The original Jews are from America and they happen to sail east. It's just like, oh my gosh, whatever, whatever. May 1923. Hitler in a social gathering said he would enter Berlin the same way Jesus Christ entered the Temple of Jerusalem and dragged the moneylenders out using a whip. In 1926, during a Christmas speech, Hitler said that his struggle against Jews is to carry out the work of Christ, which he could not accomplish in his lifetime. funny because no matter what people will always use religion in forms of hate ah it, it just happens and what's funny is hitler himself was half jewish it was like it was like did anyone even bother because everyone had to write down their family lineage did anyone bother to ask hitler his in a speech in munich on 25th october 1930 hitler called hackenkreuz a part of the christian tradition and said we should have no doubt that this Christian cross is a symbol of the struggle against the Jews, Marxists, and the Bolsheviks. Further, he hinted, if the Lord Jesus Christ suddenly appears in front of the people of Germany today, then he may join the Nazi party too. Hitler, in his speech, Hitler used to describe the work of his party as God's work. And what great, what hate group hasn't done that throughout time i mean just look at what happens now all hate is done in the acts of religion just because that it, it feels like there it's easier to get away with it because of that well now it's done in the acts of emotion but it, it's the same concept because religion comes with a lot of emotion a lot of people have emotional understanding and uh you know backing in it, it oh my gosh so it <laughs> I don't I don't think they're getting the right point across here because it's just like, yes, yes, I already knew Hitler was heavily influenced by Christianity or what he assumed it was. I already knew he used it to control the people. I mean, that's been a case like even if you watch the book of Eli, he wanted to control the people by having the scriptures because he knows the power the words have. It's, it's about uh, it's about emotionally pulling on that tether to get people to do what you want them to do, even if it's against their own baser instincts or what they feel isn't right. You just say, oh, it's God's will. It, it changes the whole perspective and be like, oh, okay, then this is obviously good. And then eventually that, that ball of stink that you've been rolling ends up growing too big that you can't stop it at that point in time. But it's like, this This isn't telling the right story. It's just like, oh, let's call the swastika the Gideon from now on. Then everyone's going to say that uh, the, the people who use it in uh, India are copying it. No, no, they're, they're two different. They're two different. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I'm getting, I feel like this was poorly done. It's trying to just shift the blame. You don't shift the blame. You don't shift the blame. You teach people. You teach people because I'm getting upset. It's just like. This isn't teaching me anything. It's making me upset because it's just going, oh, we're not at fault. Don't don't say that this is evil, but 
say that the other one that looks exactly like it is evil. Like, what? <laughs> It's Pandora's box. It's been opened. You can't put it back in the box. You can't close it. It's the swastika. It's go will always be the swastika. What you can do is change people's perspective of it. Wanted to run his own party as a religious order. On November 30th, 1944, in a long speech on Judaism versus Christianity, Hitler tramples on the notion that Jesus Christ was a Jew, because according to him, Judaism is a symbol of capitalism, and whoever follows it is corrupt. These sentiments didn't resonate only in Hitler's speeches. In fact, his entire political career was permeated with vitriolic, lava-like racial segregation. Gee, where does that sound familiar? Well, where do you use racial tension and you invent racial tension in order to get political, political, you know, sway? It happens all over. It is just, it, it's very familiar that the fact that that stuff still happens now. So nothing's changing. <laughs> you're, you're not, you're not, you're not changing the, the, the narrative. You're just saying, oh, this is politics and that's politics. Jesus Christ. In one of the most popular posters on the life of Jesus Christ, John the Baptist is seen baptizing him while a white dove is hovering around him in a clear sky with a shining sun. In 1935, the Nazi party publishes a similar poster of Hitler. The only difference being Christ is replaced by Hitler and the dove is replaced by an eagle. So, some there, there are people who do that now. It's called, uh, what is it? Art? Revisionist art? Yeah, it's just revisionist art. People who do the same thing, copy it, do it. Heck, the social media is flooded with people copying other people. Argue that Hitler was against Christianity. Some examples of this are also given. But this is cherry picking a few facts from Hitler's political portfolio or cursorily comparing the nuances in Protestantism with Catholicism. According to the 1933 census, about 67% of Germany's Christians were Protestants and 33% Roman Catholic. Indubitably, these statistics are significant for a politician. In his uh, book, Mein Kampf, Hitler states that the Catholic Church cannot comprehend the problems and issues of German people because the prime body which governs the Catholic Church is not located in Germany. Subtly, he meant, since the central body of Catholic Christianity is in Rome, while the seeds of Protestantism were planted in Germany, the Catholic Church will not be able to empathize with Germany's problems. People often cite such examples to show Hitler was against Christianity. But it is nowhere close to the truth, which essentially was that Hitler's beliefs on Jesus Christ and Christianity were often in conflict with the ideologies of Catholic Christianity. For Okay, open the, the Nazi Bible and tell me that he was agreeing with Christianity. If you have access to one of those, read that first and then tell me he was in agreement with Christianity and Catholicism. Please, tell me you have one of those. If you don't have one of those, you don't have the right to say that it was in line with Christianity. Because trust me, it is not in line with Christianity. He, he wrote his own book. Book version. He, he's, it's basically like the Book of Mormon, which is the third part of the, uh, you know, the Bible, which he wrote his own, just like the Mormon book is. It, he he wrote himself as a, it's just, oh, in the beginning, it started out so strong. And I thought they were going to teach about the origin of the, of, of what it means, all this knowledge behind it. And now it's just like, oh, Hitler's Christian. 
What does that have to do with the origin of the swastika? It the, the you don't put the genie back in the bottle. You don't close Pandora's box once it's been opened. There is no changing what it's called. There is no changing that. I don't think these people who are doing it understand that from now on till the end of time, unless something like the Nazi party happens again, the swastika shall always be called the swastika just because it's known around the world now as the swastika. There's no saying, oh, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. There, there's no changing it. There's no changing it. It's just the way it is. It's the way the language works. It's the way it grows and evolves. It's the way you find a, unif a unifying point because it makes it easier uh, to learn other languages and know other languages when you share a lot of the same words. So the fact that everyone uses swastika for the same thing just makes it so much easier. It's easier to talk about something. I don't want to say Gideon, swastika, whatever, hooked cross, when I'm referring to the same exact thing. Your, your argument's invalid because it's, it's trying to put, shift the blame, which also is in itself a form of hate. It's just, tell me the history of it, which I guess I already knew before I even started this, because I know what the originality is, and now I know that people are trying to shift the, trying to say, oh, wh well, what I already knew. Hitler was used the Bible to motivate people until he wrote his own. It's just one of those things that's common fact. At least I knew it was common fact. Most people know that Hitler originated with a, a Christian Catholic background. It's very common knowledge. To, to, so what's the problem with using the word swastika? It's just what it's known as now because it's become a universal word. I'm not understanding this documentary anymore. I'm not understanding it. I was thinking it would be basically about the history of the swastika, its originality, not saying, oh, Hitler was uh, influenced by Christianity and he used that. It just, it, it, I thought everybody knew that. That's common knowledge. Hello? You're not, you're not surprising anyone here. Hello? It's just aggravating. It's like you're, you're preaching to the choir. I would love to learn more about the swastika, but no. No, I'm learning about the Gideon and the fact that Hitler was using the Gideon, not the swastika. But in the end, they're one and the same. They're one and the same because everyone will use the same word no matter what you do or say. It'll always be the swastika. I'm not changing the way I say it. It's the swastika. For example, rejecting the Old Testament of the Bible because it is also accepted by the Jews and calling Jesus Christ. Yes! Yes! Look at the Book of Mormon! They believe that the New Testament and the Old Testament both are valid, but only the Book of Mormon is what's considered, like, you know, what you have to follow. It's the same thing with the Nazi party. They had the Old Testament, they had the New Testament, then they had the Nazi Bible, which did basically rewrite everything, but they're true. Just like the Book of Mormon, though, you only need to really read this one. You don't need to go back and read that. That's just fluff. It's not important. What's important is the Nazi Bible. It's like, does this argument's invalid? Is Christ a German or the first Nazi? <laughs> These actions were radically out of sync with the ideology of the Catholic Church. But are these conclusive to say Hitler was against Christianity holistically? In 1920, Hitler's Nazi party officially published 25 points of German religion. It is clearly written on the 24th point of this publication that the Nazi party advocates the tenets of Christianity. You know, there are a lot of cults that said the exact same thing. I'll just say that. There are a lot of cults and extremist organizations that say the exact same thing, that they only preach 100% of what their religion says, when most of the time they're just crazy and delusional and refuse to read their own text. The struggle we are fighting today, which will either finish with our end or by victory, in the real sense, this struggle is between Jesus Christ and Marxism. These were the powerful words of one of Hitler's closest aides, Joseph Goebbels.
April 1922, in a speech in Munich, Hitler said, My feeling as a Christian points me to my Lord and Savior as a fighter. It points me to the man who single-handedly recognized these Jews for what they were and summoned men to fight against them. But that's not the Christian, like, they are God's chosen people. It says that in the Bible. So how can you, okay, you know what, you know what? The argument's already lost me. It's already, it, that's the thing. They're, they're emotionally driven by the fact that it's called the swastika, that they're just trying to shift blame instead of just trying to educate people on the swastika. You're, you're not adding anything new to the argument. You're not. There's nothing new here. In the very beginning, I absolutely loved it. I went on a tirade. Now I'm just on a tirade because this thing is so aggravating. It's telling me things that are just obvious. Absolutely obvious. It's not gotten to the point. Tell me. Oh. He is the greatest warrior. Several testimonials over the course of time vouch for Hitler and his party's adherence to Christianity. On the contrary, it is also claimed that one of the reasons for choosing the symbol was the S in Hitler's party's name, the National Socialist German Workers' Party, which is not entirely unreasonable, as referenced in Hitler's autobiography. But the symbol's association with Christianity and Hitler's radical viewpoints on Christianity could be a major reason for his selection as a Nazi party symbol. At least that's what is evident in Hitler's regime. Well, this is reaching. This is what you call reaching. He, Hitler himself said one thing, his people said one thing, and now you're saying, well, it could be this. Now you're just reaching. The hooked cross was combined with a simple cross and the insignia of the German Christian movement, which was run in collaboration with Hitler's party. The publications of the German Christian Church organizations also carried similar symbols of the ordinary plain cross and the hooked cross. Ordinary In a 1934 plain. church convention, Gerard Hahn, the president of the Provincial Church Council, displays a pamphlet which bore a symbol of the plain cross superimposed on the hooked cross. A 1933 portrait from a German visual artist, John Hartfield, shows the grim reality of those times. The portrait depicts how a Nazi worker is converting the cross of Jesus Christ into the hooked cross. In a stamp published by Hitler's government in 1938, Hitler is shown standing outside a church with a Latin cross on top and a hooked cross flag. Hitler ki uh, okay, so the, throughout this entire thing, they're just going to be calling it a hooked cross. So they're just trying to say it's a... No, just call it a swastika. There was a swastika flag hanging outside. There was a... You're not going to... So they're just going to keep saying hook cross to try and tell you that it's not the swastika. But again, the genie's out of the bottle. You... <laughs> Oh, they've rubbed that lamp pretty hard to try and wish it all back into the... I was like, but no, th this isn't changing. It's not changing. No matter what you say, it's not going to change. The only thing you can do is educate people to move forward, not try and change the name of it. it it's, it's not going to change. It'll never change. Uh, so, uh, the swastika will always be synonymous now with hate. But what you can do is also tell people the original version of it, the originality, the the, the Hindu's version of it. It's just there's there's so many things you could do. But no, they're just like, oh, this is uh this is the Christian version of it. This is the Christian version. So it does it's not gonna change the name. <laughs> I'm not gonna call it a hooked cross. Does that sound cool? I don't think it sounds cool. Uh, the swastika just sounds better. It, Every division of Hitler's armed forces were marked, had a cross and a hooked cross on every flag, whether it was the Air Force, the Army, or the Navy. German Mailong. League of Nazi Women, an award for German women, the uh, honor cross of German mothers, an award to honor mothers of German soldiers or the German Order Medal. 
Even the Nazi German aircrafts all feature the cross and the hook cross together. Hitler's belief in Christianity has often been a moot point over the years. In 2010, Pope Benedict XVI said in a speech that Hitler was an atheist who wanted to obliterate mankind's belief. Well, of course, that's the Pope. He's spoken to by God. So, of course, he can change the narrative whenever he wants. And everyone who believes that will immediately be like, oh, okay, God told him that uh, he was an atheist. But did, that argument still doesn't fly with most people. It's just like, no, no, history tells us one thing. Just be, Well, of course, a lot of people just believe what they're told. Belief in God. But the belt worn by Nazi soldiers during the war had the inscription, Gott mit uns, i.e. God with us. The nexus of eminent Christian leaders of that period with Hitler and his Nazi party has also been questioned over the years. Most of them have been shown saluting the Nazis. A few protested, only to be silenced subsequently. However, the most shocking has been the silence of the top leaders of Christianity in that era, i.e. Pope Pius XI and the Twelfth. They held back and stayed absolutely tight-lipped during these horrific times. Well, because who knows? Maybe they were on board with it. But, I mean, I wouldn't put it past uh, the past people because everyone has hate. Everyone feels it. And if they're not personally doing things, sometimes they don't care. And at that point in time, seeing the repercussions of, like, we didn't know what happened in the war till way after where these videos would come out of, because it just took forever to develop film. Now it's instantaneous, but yeah, yeah. In 1933, a Jewish woman, Edith Stein, who converted to Christianity and became a nun, wrote a letter to Pope Pius XI denouncing the Nazi regime and asking the Pope to openly denounce the regime in front of the whole world. He's not going to do that. The, the Vatican was on the way of his rampage. He wanted to stay alive. He cared more about himself than whatever he believed in. That's the thing. It was like self-preservation. It's a thing. Her letter received no response. Yep. Today, there is evidence that the Pope read this letter and chose to ignore it. Yep. Edith Stein took her last breath in the concentration camps in Auschwitz in 1942. Today, in Christianity, Edith Stein is known as a saint and a martyr. But there was a time when the Pope ignored her even after reading her letter. This silence was so deep and so shocking throughout this period that Carlo Falcone wrote a 400-page voluminous book, The Silence of Pius XII. In 1942, Pope Pius XII in his Christmas speech, criticized the Nazi party without making any direct references to Hitler. His criticism of Nazis came at a time when the genocide and extermination of Jews had hit its peak. By the way, Pius XII became Pope in 1939, but in 1933, he was the Papal Secretary of State in the Nazi government. It can be debated whether or not Hitler believed in traditional Catholic Christianity. But the fact that there was some form of Christian influence on Hitler and his government... Well, yeah, that's a fact. It's been a well-established fact. It's a commonly... Well, I think it's a commonly known fact. ...was even brought to limelight by the media of his enemy nations at that time. On May 16th, 1941, the Daily Mirror in England published a cartoon defining Hitler's regime. An ape was shown as Hitler who was turning a simple Latin cross into a Hakenkreuz. And the new Christianity, 100% Aryan, was used as a caption for the cartoon's theme. It is clear from here that Hitler's policies, ideologies, and the work done under his regime was called New Christianity, whose poisonous seeds were sown under this sign and which germinated to propagate cannibalism. It can now be understood that this symbol of Hitler had no association whatsoever with the swastika. No duh! No duh! You're, you're, mm. Oh my gosh! 
Oh my gosh. It, it's, it's, oh my gosh. It's this, this, this documentary is not making any sense. It's not making any sense. It's making, it's just like, no, duh. Anyone who knows the originality, like even I knew at the beginning. And this, this, this documentary is just aggravating me because it's like all this stuff is common knowledge. There's nothing new here to basically be like, oh, that's fascinating. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's, that's historic. It's like, yeah, this is very well doc. World War II is well documented at this point in time. Everybody knows a lot about it. The, the fact that you guys didn't even bother getting a hold of one of the Nazi Bibles for your documentation is one of the things that's absolutely aggravating. It's like, come on. You know they had their own Bible. That's very common knowledge. A Hindu symbol, even from a religious belief perspective. But the big question is, what was the media and society of that time calling this symbol of Hitler's Nazi party. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know. On November 21st, 1922, the New York Times published the first article about Hitler in which his ardent followers were called Hockenkreuzler, which means followers of the Hockenkreuz. In the same article, the word Hockenkreuz was used in about four different places for Hitler's symbol, and it was said that this Hockenkreuz uprising of Hitler's is a hit. Here the word Hockenkreuz, however, is not defined at all, as if people are well aware of this sign. Okay, okay, it seems like they're finally getting to the point. It seems like the majority of the middle section just did not belong. It absolutely did not belong. They could have had a small segment saying that uh, Hitler was influenced by Christianity, so that w therefore the fact that it's called the swastika is strange. Let's find out why they use that word. And then they start telling us why that word was used in the first place. Why was the propaganda started and why does the world know it as the swastika now? That is what you do. You don't go, oh, just so you know this. Well, duh. Just so you know this. Well, duh. That, just so you know this. Well, duh. Just tell me. Just tell me what I came here to see. In December 1923, the New York Times published another article referencing Heiken Cruz. However, after Hitler came to power, New York Times published another article on 19th March 1933, choosing the words Hooked Cross and Swastika. And the article also mentioned the Swastika made its way to Germany from India, a presupposition for which there has been no proof till date. The question is, if the Swastika and Hooked Cross are equivalents, then what is the Swastika's relation to India? Because the Indian Swastika is not a cross at all, a shocking revelation on this is made by the New York Times itself in 1939. December 31st, 1939, in the freezing winters, an article was published in the New York Times titled The Antique Crosses of Christendom. The article mentioned, although there are several different types of crosses, there are five basic forms of a cross. Hooked cross is one of them, whose origin is lost in the savagery surrounding the swastika. The New York Times, which described the hooked cross as the swastika in 1933, was calling the hooked cross a victim of the swastika in 1939. Yeah, they could have just cut out because this is the interesting part. This is the interesting bit. What? what, what? Why did it happen? Did they? Did, was it ignorance? Was it the fact that they did some random research, or was there someone from India saying, "Oh, I recognize this symbol. It's a swastika. That's what they called it." There is that 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 could have been the case, and they just didn't. They were like, "Oh, okay, let's do that." Because honestly, the the hooked cross was not really that prevalent in the U.S. And if with it being such a a very prominent thing in Christianity, you think it would have made its its way to be everywhere, especially it has to do with the, it's just the basic cross that made it everywhere, but In 1922, yeah. the New York Times was not the only one referring to this symbol as Hakenkreuz. Several organizations during that period tried to describe the swastika as a type of cross or a unique symbol. So why did it change? Symbol. Why did it change? What led to the change? The Basque Museum in Bayonne, France, has been issuing its bulletin for more than 80 years in French. 
In the 1936 bulletin, the museum called the sign the Basque Cross. Further, it says that the swastika does not exist in the Basque region, although crosses of this type are very common. In the 19th century, Professor Max Müller also strongly said that the symbols on the archaeological or historical remnants of Troy should not be called a swastika. The word Hakenkruz is present in the 1798 Adlong Dictionary of German words, and it is described as, quote, a cross decorated with hooks, unquote. But the word swastika is not seen anywhere in it, which implies the German society knew Hakenkruz as a cross, not as swastika. All right, let's get to the point. But we're getting close. We're getting close. After all the, the pointless this fluff. This is the conundrum. How did a society in which crosses were an integral part and carried deep symbolism, where various crosses were part of the culture for millennia, often even carved in stone, a society that was hardly exposed to swastika, suddenly start referring to Hakenkreuz by another name? While all this was brewing in Europe, it was too far removed from the common Indian, still colonized by the Britishers to fathom the deviousness of this game, which would haunt their future generation. The answer is hidden in the translation and spread of Hitler's autobiography. In Mein Kampf, Hitler describes the colors and symbols of his party's flag, according to which Hakenkreuz symbolizes the goal of his party, which is the struggle for the victory of the Aryan race. I thought Google translated Hockenkreutz to swastika, and right there it translated it to hooked cross. That seems a little, little strange. And the goal of victory of that ideal creative work, which will always be anti-Semitic and fatal for Jewish people. Here, what does Hitler mean by creative work, which will be fatal for Jews? He did not describe it, but in future, does Hitler create something which proves fatal for Jews? The answer is a single word. Auschwitz. After trampling Poland, Hitler built the Auschwitz concentration camp in 1939. In simple words, it was a factory for the total genocide of Jewish people. By 1944, nearly 1.1 million people were brutally killed there, of which over 900,000 were Jews. And this is in a single camp. By the end of World War II, Hitler killed a total of about 6 million Jews. The whole world was stunned by this diabolical and unprecedented creation of Hitler. This genocidal creative work was carried under the flags bearing the Hakenkreuz, which today has become a symbol for anti-Semitism and hate groups, just that they now incorrectly call it swastika. This change of a single word is one of the greatest deceits of the 20th century. Let us now see how it was executed. Thank you! Thank you! It's about time! In 1931, Hitler's book Mein Kampf is translated into English by E.T.S. Dugdale, in which Hockenkreutz is translated as Hooked Cross. Never once does the book mention swastika. This was when Hitler had not yet come into power, but had become popular. Hitler came to power in 1933 and without wasting any time, started executing a script of the persecution of Jewish people. The script began by snatching the human rights of Jews and ended with snatching their right to life. In 1939, Hitler destroyed Poland. Britain also jumped into World War II. And in the same year, Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, is retranslated into English, this time by a man named James Murphy.
This rapidly became the most popular English translation of Mein Kampf or My Struggle. And in here, every mention of Hakenkreuz is translated to swastika and thus began the process of changing a symbol of peace and well-being to an emblem of extreme evil and hatred. But that doesn't change it whatsoever. I mean, I know they're trying to uh, to show the th but the thing is, no matter what, the the western world will always identify the hooked cross and if they went to India, they'd identify the hooked cross being used it's so it's just like one of those things that it's like you're you're supposed to re-educate and teach i like the fact that they're showing us the why what what led to that was it a, a racial hatred was it someone who just had been to india and just despised uh people that he believed were less than him i mean what what was the reason like that's that's the main point of this documentary that's what they established in the beginning and then they gave me like 40 minutes in the beginning of nothing but fluff maybe 35 but in his book, Hitler says that the Haken Cruz will be deadly for the Jews. This was a sign under which a horrifying genocide took place and whose origins could be traced to Christianity. This would have been the biggest stigma on Christianity in entire history. James Murphy, who translated Hitler's book in English, was himself a Christian priest. Could someone associated with Christianity tolerate such a big stigma on Christianity? Is this why James Murphy translated the Hacken Prize into the swastika? Whether this was a mischief of an individual or a bigger concerted plan, James Murphy is not here today to explain. But the fact that Murphy translated incorrectly is indisputable. So they also don't have a... So there is no... Oh... I was hoping it'd be like some kind of reason as to why he did it. Now it's just like, oh, well, let's just call it something. The unassailable truth is that Hitler never called the Nazi symbol a swastika. Others falsely equated Hakenkreuz with the swastika. In spite of this, initially, the swastika did not become the default name for the Nazi symbol. American culture. In a 1946 publication of essays on American culture and literature in Arizona Quarterly, Hitler and his followers were referred to as Gamadion minded Around the same time, in the Journal of Education, Volume 127, published in 1944, the Nazi symbol was called Filfot or Gamadion. Then how did this symbol become swastika for the common man? For clues to this answer, see this scene from a 1959 Hollywood movie, Prohibido. You know, that used to be our shoulder patch till we switched to the Thunderbird. The swastika. That's an old American Indian sign that Hitler copped from us. Believe it or not, the 45th Division used to wear the swastika right here. An American soldier wearing a swastika? Well, we had it long before Little Adolf got the idea. Film. A popular medium that reaches door to door. Over time, the use of swastika for the Nazi symbol spread to every book written on Hitler and in every article in every type of media. Media can create powerful narratives which a common man cannot decipher. In a single generation, media can even falsify a hard fact. Mm -hmm. And this is how swastika became completely associated with Hitler and Nazism. This lie has been living and growing in the minds of people for decades now. But for but 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 it's not a lie anymore. That's what it's called, and that's that's how words change meaning and definition. And oh, what you have the the, the goal is to educate people. Oh, let them know that there's like oh that that's just a, a an action of hate. That like that's the thing. You you can say that uh, Hitler was Christian. You can say that that's another uh what is it um oh crap Great Crusade uh, as it were were uh, atrocities committed in the name of Christianity. You could add that to the list, but that's the thing. It was like, like I've always said, extremism, no matter what the religion, no matter what the belief, is hate in hate and of itself. What, you, what the, people have got to do is understand that there is more behind symbols. There is more behind people than what they, what their, their actions and what they do. Sometimes they just fall into a group. That's why it's like I always say, hate the people, love the individual. Because 
people as a group take on the worst aspects of the group. But as an individual, like you, you could talk to someone who's in like one of the worst groups out there. But you talk to, to, to as they're all in a group. But you take one aside, talk to them individually. You could develop a rapport. You could get to know them, and they become some of the nicest, closest friends you could ever have. But in their group, they're terrible because you identify them as their group. It's just the way society works. It's the way humans work. Just it's just like we're we're just like animals. We we identify as the pack. As like who's the pack leader? Everyone who follows that pack leader literally is seen as bad as the pack leader. Even though the individual might not be that bad. You get them off alone as a lone wolf and you'll find out that they're they're their own strong human being. We we're, we're animals. We're just more sophisticated animals. For how long? Hitler never ever used swastika. Hitler benutzte das Wort Hakenkreuz. Das bedeutet nicht, dass es swastik. It was Hakenkreuz. A symbol used in church. Which was wrongly turned into swastika. The glory of swastika should be restored. Swastik is a symbol of our civilization. It has been misused for decades. Its misuse must stop. And it is your responsibility now. Because the seeds of real civilization will grow even in the desert. There may be delays, but the truth has to come out and reclaim its place. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't care for this one. It's it's ending with the note that it's your... T it's like, I... The only reason I've got through it all is because I was... It, I've been told to watch it. But, like, what was it? Seven minutes in where they started telling me things that were already common fact? I'm like... Is that what this is all about? Are they just going to shift blame to someone else? It doesn't make sense. No, educate people. Tell them its originality. Make a documentary on what its origins was. Oh my gosh, because this isn't going to change anyone's opinion on what it's called. It's You can't undo it. I've said it multiple times. You can't undo it. Once it's been said, it's been said. It's been said so much that it's the swastika. It will always be known as such. What you do is teach people about the other, more traditional, the real meaning behind it. Not what it was used for in this act of cruelty for, what, a 10-year period? No, it's thousands of years period of what it meant, it, what it represented. That's what you do. I knew that because I watched a lot of uh, Eastern cinema, East, like anime. I watched all that stuff growing up, and I had come across it in many different ways. So I was curious. And my curiosity was like, what, why is this sign of hate on a monk's forehead? And it was just like, I, I learned about it. But most people don't know. Most people refuse to know, too. So doing something like this was just, like, aggravating. It was aggravating because it just felt like they were just saying, oh, it's not the swastika, which it probably wasn't. It probably wasn't. But that's not going to change what it is now. That's not going to change what people call it now. It's already been too long. It's already just just re-educate people. It's about showing people the the your version of it. Because all you were doing was saying, oh, this is what Christians believe. This is what Christians believe. This is what uh, Hitler believed. This is what Christians believe. This is what Hitler had influence on. Where in there was the the your belief? Where in there was the peace? Where in there was the the love that comes from the swastika? The 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 the. the but it wasn't there. All they were talking about was shifting blame or talking hate. And it was like they're they're just they're just. They're not educating. They're just saying, oh, this this isn't this isn't what you call it. Like, no, that is what we call it. That will always be what it's called. You're not going to change it with one video. You you can't do that. If anything, it should have just been like the, the history of the swastika where it shows like the various versions of different religions. And they basically talk about the meanings of each one. And then they bring in near the end or have, have like in the beginning, like Hitler using it, a sign of hate, a sign of uh, uh, aggravation, a, a sign of just anti-Semitism. And then... You go into telling every uh, definition, every every understanding of it, and then every every you know thousand year old version of what it means, and then you go into at the very end. We need to change this uh, perspective on the fact that it's meant hate for so many years. Because it's been what fifty, 
60, 70 years that it stood, especially in the Western world, as a sign of hate. It's just one of those things. And this documentary does not help. It does not. Because most people will not sit through it if they come from the West. Because I was already being told things I already knew. And it just looked like they were saying, oh, uh, I don't like that it's being called this. I don't like that it's being... It just sounded like whining. And I was like, oh... I don't care. Don't don't whine. Tell me tell me how it changed. And I was like, oh, this one white dude happened to change it. We don't know why he did it. We don't know. It's like, oh, great, great. So in the end, there is no real. It was bothering me because there was no real answer as to why it happened, and it's aggravating. It's aggravating because it's like, oh, I know that happens. That's the problem with real real life and real history. You never truly know as to people's actions, what they do, why they do it. But it was just like, oh. They built that up to the very end. I waded through that sludge of, oh, let's blame this. Let's blame this. Let's blame this. Let's call it this when it's too late to change the name of it. it it's like, let's call it this. Let's call it this. I never once was it just like, oh, this is how it changed. He just happened to change the name in a book. And yeah, that's it. And then it popped up in a movie. And the movie one, I understand. Like, the the movie industry was used to su subtly send messages to the people, to control the people, encourage people to enjoy war, encourage people to uh, fight for their country, encourage, it just, it did a lot of that stuff. It did a lot of that stuff, and th they were able to, like I said it when I started, the West has been good at conditioning people to believe things are only good if it comes from the West. So, most people who watch, like, even my friends, I tried constantly to tell them to watch uh, various movies from like India or certain foreign films they refuse to because to them everything that comes from out uh, anywhere from uh, but Hollywood is utter trash no matter what I tell them it's utter trash and I'm someone who hates everything I watch for the past 20 years or so I have been complaining with every single movie I saw out of Hollywood Complaining, never happy, never enjoyed it. And then I start t watching Indian cinema and I start talking it up. And they're like, you're just, you're just nuts. You just don't understand Hollywood. And I'm like, Hollywood's trash. It, it, so it's a, so they do control the narrative. They do control people's perspective. It's kind of, they ruined themselves because they made it too obvious in the past few years. But yeah, it, it's, this documentary did not work. <laughs> I wish, I wish it was more of the history because I was thinking I was going to learn something new and all I learned were, um, yeah, Hitler was a Christian, duh, uh, Hitler used the, the Bible to basically manipulate his, the, his entire nation, the first nation, like I've said this many times, the first nation Hitler took over was Germany, he, t he conquered his own before he was able to start conquering other ones, but yeah, um, Oh, hopefully you guys were able to get to the end with me whining halfway through. I enjoy and talking so much in the beginning and all. I don't know how long this took, but yeah, this 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 ran on for a bit. I'm sorry. I, I it, it, there were there were highs, a lot of lows, and then at the very end it was just meh. So it, it, <laughs> I just wish it was done differently. I really wish it was done differently. If it was done more of an educative format, I guess it was educative, but it was like. The point, well, I've already known, like, I think the problem was I went in knowing more than most people because I've just been immersed in Eastern cinema, uh, Eastern culture all my life. So for me, a lot of this stuff is common sense. I've known this stuff because, heck, I, I grew up really ill and I spent the first few years of my life just glued to my computer. I finished all my weekly homework in one day and then I start studying things for fun, random stuff here and there. I'd see something be like why the heck is that there and then i'd look it up and find its original true meaning instead of what the west tells you it is but yeah um yeah that was the swastika of silence the biggest betrayal honestly i don't understand the title anymore and um i don't understand the the title uh, like the biggest uh, like betrayal i don't it could have been a fluke they don't even know if it's a betrayal. They don't know any of that. It was just like, oh, this is what happened. This one white dude translated it like that. We don't know if it was a group of people. We don't know if it was done in hate. Well, then it's not a betrayal. 
It, it's not a betrayal. The the biggest uh, uh, mis misrepresentation <clears throat> would have been something better to say. The biggest misrepresentation. But yeah, I, I, I'm sorry if you guys absolutely enjoy this documentary. For me, it didn't work just because it, it, I already knew all that stuff. It's aggravating. It's absolutely aggravating. It's just like... But I guess for other people who are from the West, maybe they don't know this stuff. Maybe it isn't common knowledge. For me, it was just because I, I bothered looking it up. But it, it probably is an amazing documentary for other people. For me, not so much. <laughs> just because I was hoping for more history on India. Learning more about the, the swastika. Because I, I knew what it meant in Japan because I looked that up. I figured that out, uh, what the monks used it for. But, you know... Thank you all for watching. Leave your comments down below if there's an actual documentary of the history of the swastika. I would love to see that. But um, this one just didn't do it for me. I probably knew too much going in. And yeah, it... it, it <laughs> I don't know. Did you guys find anything fascinating about it? What 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 is it about this that it... Oh, did I miss something? Did I absolutely miss the, any key points about it? Because to me, it's just like certain things have already been said, certain things have already been done. You can't undo the things that have been done. There, there is no going back and changing things. There is just teaching people and educating them on the, the original meanings behind things. There is no changing their minds on things. There's just educating them on the original meanings of things. So that way, they'll, okay, there's two meanings. But yeah, that, maybe there's something that I missed in this. Maybe. I mean, I paused it quite a bit in the beginning. I paused, paused it quite a bit halfway through. And then I paused it when it was finally getting to its point. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Thank you for recommending this. Even though it wasn't it wasn't my cup of tea, it, I really had a lot to talk about. Thank you all for watching. Talk to you next time. Toodles.